What's up, Internet? Matt at Overkill Woodcraft, and today I'm going to show you how I made this match fit cross cut sled with an adjustable zero clearance insert. I honestly wish I didn't wait so long to make this sled because I've been using it nonstop ever since, and it's been awesome. Uh, this video isn't sponsored. I just really enjoy the match fit system because it's kind of been a game changer for my shop. Now, even if you're not wanting to make a match fit sled, I think you'll still find a lot of what's in this video helpful, especially in regards to this adjustable zero clearance insert. So stick around and I will show you how I did it. I went with high density MDF for this sled because I don't have to worry about it potentially warping over time. So I just started off by cutting up my left and right wing to size and making sure that they were completely square. Next I set my fence to 4 inches and then cut what will end up being my insert between the two wings, leaving it slightly longer than the two wings. To avoid burning up my dovetail bit, I'm marking out a bunch of relief cut lines. I marked them about every 6 inches and I made sure to do that going both ways, so left to right and up to down. That will save you a ton of time in the future. And for those cuts, I'm going to use this flat tooth blade and basically just make a cut on each side of the line. And then I just set it to depth using this handy gauge that comes with the match fit system. So I'm just making that first cut, then bumping my fence over slightly, then making my second cut. So the great thing about using that 6 inch square grid pattern is that once you've made a vertical cut you can then just spin your board around 90 degrees and make a horizontal cut and this saves you from having to do all of your vertical cuts and then readjust your fence again and go back and do all of your horizontal cuts. So I use that gauge to set my dovetail bit to proper height and then began routing out those tracks and here's what I was talking about which is flipping it around and then hitting the horizontal track. Those relief cuts definitely make a huge difference with this. To allow clamp access up against the back fence I took a three quarters straight bit and routed some longer lines on those back grooves which you can see I left a little bit longer than the 6 by 6 inch grid so I just marked a spot on my router table with a pencil and routed that straight bit up to those lines on uh, the ends of each of the four grooves on, on each wing. And as you can see that will work out perfectly. To prepare for attaching the first miter bar to my left wing I put all of my components on the table saw, got them in place, raised up my saw blade, moved my fence over right up to that saw blade, and then lowered it. I like using double-sided tape to help attach these miter bars to the bottom of the wing, along with the old faithful washer trick to bump it up just a tad. You just want to make sure it's on there nice and secure before you take it out to secure it with screws. I just made sure to drill some very tiny pilot holes and gently secure them with the screws because it is MDF. Even though it's high density, uh, they still like to strip occasionally in here. Then I used a 3 quarter inch ruler, which ended up being half the width of my fence, to go ahead and countersink some holes for when I go to attach that back fence. I wanted that adjustable insert to be able to accommodate a 3 quarter inch dado, so I just took an off cut of the MDF, used it as a spacer between the insert and my saw blade, and then put my right wing in there and locked everything in place with my fence. And then I went ahead and removed that spacer, the insert, and the right wing so I could prepare to attach the miter bar on the bottom of the right wing. And again here I just used some washers and double sided tape to temporarily attach that miter bar to the bottom of my right wing before permanently attaching it with screws.
And now that that's taken care of, I'm going to prepare to attach my back fence to the left and right wing. A little preview of how that'll work. Here I'm just adding a few reference lines for where I'll countersink um, my screws for the back fence. I just wanted to make sure I didn't accidentally countersink a screw through one of those dovetail tracks. Again, here I just used that ruler as a spacer for countersinking my screws. And while I was at it, I went ahead, flipped the wing around, and countersinked my holes for the front fence as well. Then I took the opportunity to route a small chamfer on what will be the inside bottom of my front fence, and that will prevent any dust from building up in there. And then I took some more double-sided tape, in case you can't tell I love this stuff, and it'll help me temporarily secure my back fence in place before securing it with screws. Obviously making sure this being at a perfect 90 isn't as big of a priority as the front fence, but making sure that the left and right wings are aligned is a priority, so I just used a long straight edge for that, then kind of hung it off the end of my table saw so I could clamp it down and then secure it with several screws. And I'm going to temporarily secure my front fence in place with a screw on each side. But I really want to make sure everything's as close to a perfect perpendicular 90 to the saw blade as possible. And that's really where a lot of this other prep work comes into play of making sure, you know, your fence is square when you're cutting your pieces. All of your pieces are perfectly square. Um, just doesn't hurt to, you know, overkill it here and just make sure everything's lined up perfectly. It's really going to save when it comes to your five cut method. So I just clamped it and put a screw in on each end. And now I'm going to get ready to cut a test piece and just kind of square this up for a five cut method. There's dozens of videos out there on the five cut method, so I'm really not going to get too into it. But I will stress again with that prep work, it really helped me out here. And oh, three points. I only had to adjust my fence once and it was slightly because my cuts really weren't that far off from 90 because I set everything up properly. So, And as you can see here, I can't get any closer to 90 than that. Dead on. Now I'm just going to add a few more clamps then go ahead and secure my front fence with a ton of screws. I think I used like 9 or 10 in here. With the fence all squared up, we can get to the fun stuff which is the adjustable insert. I just put it in there and kind of temporarily secured it with two clamps and then I'm going to pre-drill a pilot hole through the outside of the insert and the outside of each fence. You just want to make sure you do this towards the right side of the insert piece when it is bumped up against the blade so that way when you go to adjust it you have room to adjust it left and right. So now it's time to remove the insert so I can drill larger holes into the outside of the fences and these will allow for me to put a threaded metal insert in there. I just use some painter's tape to mark my depth and then I put some thick star bond adhesives in there to help really make sure that that threaded insert stays in place. Just want to thread this very gently and make sure you know it stays pretty perpendicular to the table saw top. As I mentioned earlier, I left the length or the depth of this insert just slightly longer than the total length of the left and right wings. And the reason for that is I didn't want there to be a lot of friction when I was going to adjust this insert, you know, left and right. So I did put a washer between the insert and the back fence. Once I have it in place, I can just tighten it down on the front and the back and have a fully adjustable zero clearance plate. Since I waited so long to record this, I somehow lost the footage of me making the actual insert piece, but as you can see, it's nothing too fancy. Literally just glued and screwed a couple pieces of Sapelli to the middle portion of the insert. I also didn't film installing the T-Track or adding that adhesive measuring tape because it's pretty straightforward. And then I went ahead and just made a quick stop block attachment because I didn't have any. I mean, really straightforward, just uh, a couple of pieces of Sapelli that I glued and screwed together, added a screw. I always have way too much fun doing this. And then I also took the double flip stop attachment that was on my Incra. 
uh, miter gauge and just went ahead and put a couple of screws and wing nuts on that and I could use that for an attachment as well. Then when I'm done using it, I just hang it on the back of my workbench and it stays out of the way. Hope you enjoyed the video. For more woodworking tips and DIY builds, be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.